Eh, buongiorno a tutti. Beh, questo è il secondo modulo della mattinata sul tema stabilità. Good morning. This is the second module of the morning on Tartaric stability and stabilization, which is an issue which is very Uh, much of interest and correctly so because clients uh, demand uh, tartaric uh, stabilization performed correctly correctly they want stable bottles this is a must this is a need hence uh, our proposal for a strategy of uh, tartaric stabilization which is based uh, on protector colloids uh, i will talk about a molecule which will soon become a new additive, which is potassium polyaspartate. My contribution will include three points mainly. We will talk about crystals and colloids, then I will underline the strengths of stabilization which is obtained and uh, I will protect, I will tell you about polyaspartate and then I will focus uh, on, uh, on uh, stabilizing synergies, uh, which is a very important concept. Innanzitutto, instabilità tartarica, molto velocemente, che cos'è l'instabilità tartarica? What is tartaric instability? It is present in wines because the product of concentrations of tartrate and potassium ions normally exceeds the solubility product. So we have to stabilize and with tartaric stabilization what we do is this. We try and bring the two uh, things uh, at the same level. Our, we lower the product of concentration, so we increase the solubility product. And in order to lower the former, we have to take something away. Hence, uh, we talk about uh, subtraction techniques, uh, which does not uh, specify, which, uh, sorry, is called treatment uh, par excellence while uh, the techniques uh, that are additive techniques are so because uh, they mm, permit uh, to increase uh, the uh, solubility uh, product uh, by adding uh, protector colloids. Let's listen to the wine, first of all. Uh, it, that is much clearer than uh, looking at formulas. So let's see some pictures. Here we compare and contrast uh, a wine on the right hand side with a solution which is uh, a wine like solution after six days at minus four degrees. Here you see different uh, quantities of dregs. The uh, uh, wine like uh, um, has the same pH, the same alcohol content, the same concentrations of tartaric acid. Uh, acid and potassium as the wine. And uh, wine gives us a direction. Wine tells us, uh, beware, I have stabilized myself uh, uh, because I produce less crystals uh, uh, than uh, a wine-like uh, solution. How do I do that? Because uh, wine is not only a solution, but it is also a colloidal solution. So uh, wine, uh, um, in a way, starts the process. and. Uh, this is what we have uh, to consider, potassium by tartrate. What is it? You find so many pictures, and uh, here I offer two uh, with the electronic and uh, optic microscopes. But they don't tell the full story, because uh, potassium by tartrate is something different. Uh, it is like this tree which is very lucky. It grows on uh, good ground in privileged conditions, while our potassium bitrate is this. Why is it so? Because it is not lucky at all. It works uh, or tends to or tries to develop um, in the presence of several constraints. Uh, here at a high altitude, there is a strong wind. There is no soil. Well, in function of the constraints and their quantities, uh, the tree might as well not uh, grow at all. And that is the principle of tartaric stabilization using protector colloids. So this 
tree is a potassium bitertrate, which is this, where the shape is no longer so beautiful, not as beautiful as we saw before. There are several shapes, as you see. If we then use images uh, uh, that uh, are uh, made uh, with the electronic microscope, we might even see that this is potassium bitertrate. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see theory uh, still. And uh, in this case, uh, this uh, uh, potassium bitartrate uh, developed in this way in this 2015 uh, Primitivo wine with its typical colloids. And so the shape, the form as a consequence due to the colloids was this. It is sort of sheets that tend to grow larger. And I show to you another picture which I find beautiful, which is this. Remember the sheets that we saw before? This is a germ of crystallization. It's an attempt for growth, but it doesn't manage to. It is a sort of teenager crystal. It tries to grow, it tries to develop uh, uh, sheets, uh, but they do not manage to grow and they are pierced uh, because monoproteins were, uh, uh, were added. And this is uh, the effect uh, of the uh, protective uh, uh, action by monoproteins. I think that this is something you have never seen before in terms of a picture. Well, in the very same wine, if we treat this wine with uh, CMC and and GA Berek, the shape of the crystal changes again. And it is this one. So by tartrate is uh, um, opportunistic in that it tries uh, to uh, always adjust and says, I try to develop, but if you block me, this is what happens. And all these images uh, come from uh, wines which were treated with the insufficient dosage in relation to the achievement of stability. Because if you uh, if you do and act correctly, uh, you can obtain this, for instance. This is a Chardonnay wine, which has an average uh, value of uh, uh, stability, uh, instability, of tartaric tartar tartar instability, and was treated with CMC. So you have uh, protector colloids, which are effective. Strengths uh, of stabilization using colloids. It is an effective technique. Comments have been made about the quality of wine already this morning, uh, depending on the type of stabilization treatment used. So I will not repeat myself. The only comment uh, I do is uh, that uh, the cold stabilization technique is still, we think, the reference technique. Consider that this is a subtractive technique and, and a non-specific one. We remove a potassium bitrate, we remove much more, and by lowering the temperature, potentially, we increase uh, the risk for oxidization because it, uh, this increases the possibility that uh, oxygen is absorbed. I would like to focus now on the environmental impact, and I would like to tell you something about the costs, too, of this strategy. Now. Consider this graph. Here, we compare and contrast the environmental impact of several stabilization techniques. And that was calculated in terms of equivalent kilos of CO2 out of each um, treated hectoliter of wine. You see on the left hand side potassium aspartate and you see that the impact of stabilization with colloids uh, is less uh, than uh, uh, um, stabilization obtained with a cold uh, treatment. These numbers and figures tell us that uh, if wine which is stabilized uh, with the cold approaches in Europe were treated uh, with colloids, uh, for stabilization purposes, we would avoid 70,000 uh, tons of CO2 being uh, um, put into the atmosphere every year. So we would avoid those emissions. 
and then we can also use uh, the drinking water, which needs to be used. I put together all the protector colloids into one chapter because the quantity is the very same, I would say, irrespective of the type of colloid that you use. Consider that. Um, here again, the quantity of water used uh, is uh, for colloids very, very limited. And uh, if we again extend these to a European level, you see that if all wine, which is stabilized with the cold approach, were stabilized uh, with the colloid, we would save huge amounts of water, so much uh, that it is the consumption of uh, a city, say a town of 10,000 people in one year, which is a lot of water. Cost, too, is very important. So considering costs is crucial. The cost of stabilizing with colloids is similar to the delta T cost of cold treatment. That is the cost of power which we use for the refrigerators. The cost of cold stabilization in total is much higher on average than the cost of stabilization with colloids. And that is also an important thing to remember. We calculated and attached a general value to what this means at European level. If in Europe only colloids were used to stabilize wine when in leaving aside the cold treatment, we would save and this is precise information, approximately 160 million euro, which is, again, a lot of money. Let's now focus on potassium polyaspartate, which is the molecule we are working at. And we have worked extensively on that in the past five years. What is it, first of all? It is a polymer which contains aspartic acid. It is a salt of aspartic acid. This polymer is keen to wine. Why? Because it is a natural amino acid, and it is normally and naturally contained in wine from some PPMs to some hundreds of PPMs. As a consequence, what we're doing here is taking a molecule which is naturally present in wine and we transform it to obtain a technical effect and that is very nice. And uh, again, it is something which is very uh, natural, I would say. Uh, Potassium polyaspartate. Well, in 2012, we intuitively thought of polyaspartate and we tested that, and performance was very interesting. So that was our intuition. We also realized, though, that there was a long way to go because it was not an additive, a food additive, even the molecule, which meant that we promoted a big European project which involved many partners, many institutes, and which was very successful, I would say, because we managed together to create a synergy and bring together several know-how sources. In the synergetic approach, made it possible to obtain, in October 2016, the uh, authorization by and from OIV of using potassium polyaspartate for tartaric stabilization purposes. In March, a code was proposed for a food additive, which is potassium polyaspartate, because that is the normal procedure. You have to go through this procedure in order to be able to use the product in wine. What comes next is the following. We expect that the list of additives be updated soon. We expect in July 
also uh, an updating of re uh, Regulation 606 uh, on analogical practices, which means by, t by the end of the year, the product will be available for use uh, in the winemaking sector, which means that it, it, it's a near future. I sought to summarize uh, things uh, drastically, I would say, and developed one table about the features of these uh, tartaric stabilizers. And I considered what we normally are asked for by all uh, customers, uh, how much and for how long. And this is what we considered, duration and efficiency. And uh, Potassium polyaspartate, when compared to the other solutions, is doing fine. And this is even more evident if we add uh, two additional parameters, which is uh, the filterability and also the interaction with color. This is commonly known, but uh, we know that CMS has problems in relation to that. It is a defect. So if we bring everything together, we see that the profile of uh, KPA is rather good. What we believe, though, is that you do not obtain the best of the results uh, in terms of stabilization with a single compound, rather you have to exploit the synergies uh, between and among different compounds. Uh, let's talk about soccer. If you have synergies when playing soccer, you have a strong team. And it is a team winning a championship, not one single player. What we want to offer you is the possibility and uh, the tools to win two championships. This is the championship of uh, stabilization of white and rosé wines and the championship of stabilization of reds. We have two teams. And in the short time that I have left, I will uh, present to you uh, the uh, leaders of these two teams, uh, which are for uh, white and rosé wines, uh, this product, uh, which includes KPA, CMC, and Arabic uh, rubber, which is a uh, sayal. A hydrolyzed uh, sayal, and uh, putting everything together, we have a very high uh, stability. Is uh, you see controls also on the slide, and uh, the um, delta metrosimic was used to assess stability and instability. You see how high these levels are. The, the, the blue is one is Chenin Blanc 2017 from South Africa and it has uh, 350 uh, delta micro uh, SCMs. So uh, if you add the product, you can have stability in all the four uh, wines tested, even though starting from extreme levels uh, of stability. This is a huge opportunity. Very well. Let me move on to the leader of this team that will make it possible to really stabilize red wines. Now, with red wines, there's a synergy also when it comes to instability. Whenever there's an, a tartaric instability, very probably the color will be unstable too. Therefore, it is important to have a product that can take care of both instabilities. This product contains a potassium polyaspartate and uh, gum arabic rec. And as you can tell from the pictures, it can manage high levels of tartaric instability and color instability. So this product hopefully will be will provide an excellent opportunity to all wine producers uh, to better manage their wines. In conclusion, we feel that um, colloid-based stabilization certainly is a strategic option in order to increase the competitiveness of uh, companies uh, while paying uh, specific attention to sustainability and product quality.
I'd like to leave the floor now to Paola Domizio of the University of Firenze, who is going to present the results, um, the outcomes, the conclusions of a thesis, a university graduation thesis at the end of a European project that has characterized the environmental performance of potassium polyaspartate.